Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of Disruptive Plays. My name is Joanna. Hi guys, I'm Emily. And today we're going to be talking about trade shows. So everything from preparing yourself for trade shows while you're at the show, post-show, um, all of that. We're just going to dive into it. Can yeah. I talk a little bit about like some things we've seen at different shows, what I view it does to prepare for all of these shows? Because we go to a lot of so shows. many. <laughs> uh, you should just see our trade show calendar. It's a little crazy, but it's yeah. so fun. So Yeah, and we want to talk about this because trade shows are something that people get so stressed out about because there's so much that goes into it. And it involves, you know, the sales team, the marketing team, the operations team. Like it involves the whole team and it sometimes doesn't fall on the whole team to prepare for it. So we just want to talk about our best tips, our best practices, what I've learned over the last mm -hmm. five years of just being a part of these trade shows. So yeah. let's start from, from top to finish. And I feel like we have yeah. some horror stories that we can tell we do. happening. <laughs> <laughs> we 100% absolutely do. So um, yeah, I guess let's just, let's start because yeah, I view it does go to like closer to 20 shows than 10 shows that's for yeah. sure um and you know that doesn't even include like off events like i know we just went yeah. to some connects and rough model like marketing events or you know like going to a dollar general like our charity event mm -hmm. um and going to clients events so there's so many events so let's, yeah let's start from the top absolutely <laughs> i think one thing it's just you have to be so prepared and organized. So yeah. we have a big Google sheet where we just keep all of the info and we divide it up by vertical. We talk about the show that it's, um, the show that we're going to, when it is, what hotel is the host hotel, what are the reservations for the hotel that we're staying Are we at? paid? Did yep. we register our, you know, who's going, how right. many people are going, what's the pay for it? Um, we like to take averages too of just like, you know, the averages for our flights just so we get an estimate mm -hmm. when it comes to budget and at the end of the year and yeah. doing ROI. But we go by this like it's our Bible. Like yeah. we, we didn't used to, when we would go to trade shows, we didn't go to as many trade yeah. shows. So we wouldn't have a weekly meeting, but we have weekly meetings every Friday now where it's anybody who's, it's our typical trade show team and then maybe anybody who's going to a trade show. So maybe if somebody from operations is coming, they might jump on, but we meet because we don't want to miss any detail. No. And sometimes those meetings are quick, but it does help to just go through this tracker and hold accountability. Um, and that's really, that's what it comes down to. Have the hotel's been booked. Um, are there speaking engagements possible? Right. Has marketing done their email outreach? What's, you know, who sales reached out to? Mm -hmm. um, and and just to keep track too of like, have we booked meetings? I know Gabby has, I wish we had her to talk more on that, but yeah. I want to give a little light to just, you know, while we're at the show, like that pre-marketing as well, um, before, during, and after the show. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, I think our sales team, our SDRs do an amazing job of just all that pre-show outreach and just really understanding who's going to the show, who are some top targets that they make, they want to make sure that they're speaking to. Um, so they do an amazing job with that, whether that's like LinkedIn outreach, um, just engaging too with like the posts of the trade show coming up and, yeah. and kind of um, getting excited about that and building some more hype around the fact that like I view it's going to be there. Um, and then at the show, just making sure that you're, you know, finding those people, making good connections with them, and then also following up with them post-show. So I really do think that our SDRs do an amazing job with that. Oh yeah, they do. And, and because shows are expensive. I they mean, are. like anybody that's going to the shows, like they cost so much money, just mm -hmm. all the little details of it. And so you want to make sure that you are getting the best possible chance from it. And so that means like joining the portals like so many yeah. times these trade shows they have portals where they have you know chat boards or you know their own type of linkedin within this portal where yeah. it's just another place to go learn about you uh, making sure that your profile is always filled out i can't tell you how many leads that we've gotten mm -hmm. or just pre-calls because we fill out our profile on the trade show portal so you could add like videos you can even upgrade and do like premium listings so you could have like a gold listing <laughs> on a digital profile so you can have extra videos you can post on um, like blog posts i know i've done you know like us going to ink us being like the connects fm supplier of the year yeah. like those things just for more credibility um they even have if you're having a um like a promotion going on while you're at the show you can list that so just taking advantage of all the marketing opportunities that these trade shows offer you uh, because so many people just don't even add a logo to yeah. that site oh, so yeah. it's like 
just you gotta get the most out of it and that's why you have to have that organization and make mm -hmm. sure that nothing is slipping through the cracks in that way yeah and i i will say multiple of the shows we went to a, a show for the first time this year sweets and snacks yeah and i remember getting on the portal and just being like nobody has a logo up nobody had a link to their website up like yeah. it was just crazy and i think i think the mindset sometimes becomes like oh a lot of people aren't using it i'm yeah. not going to use it and my motto mod, like my moto motto, motto. <laughs> <laughs> with all of that is always like okay so be the one to like stand out show yeah. up like a lot of times people aren't connect like talking or posting even on like linkedin groups like yeah i love linkedin groups because a lot of people don't use them but you always get notified of yeah. when somebody posts in there so like be the one to stand out be the one to like talk about your your promotions talk about you know a party that you might be hosting right um so maybe i guess that's a good segue like additional ways to market at trade yeah. shows um, I know I've been asked that quite a few times, just like, Hey, we, okay, let me, let me preface <laughs> a little bit. So for the past three years, we've hosted a really big retailer party at connects FM mm -hmm. and it's, it's great. I mean, we usually have like 200 to 300 attendees there and we do a lot of like pre-show marketing for it. Um, and then we've actually even gotten the trade show organization to, promote it on their website too, which is really neat. So the way to go about that is just make vendor friends, like yeah. connecting people, getting out of your comfort zone, joining committees, like just knowing people in the industry to be able to host parties or events like that is so big. Like, yeah. I don't know your experience and just like going to these shows and it is a little bit out of your comfort zone, especially when you're first getting into the industry, but it's so worth it. Like it's the best okay. part for me. Oh, for sure. No, I love going to shows and, and meeting new people. And it was actually funny. I was at uh, Nax, you know, what, like a month ago now? Yeah. And I ran into somebody that I haven't seen in like 18 months that I saw at a totally different trade show, literally like almost two years before that. Yeah. And it was one of those moments, like kind of like Spider-Man meme, like <laughs> we're like, I know you, like, Wait, <laughs> I know you. It was just like really funny. Yeah. Um, but it, it's funny because like I have since, you know, moved over to iViewit and so just running into somebody that I knew in like a past role yeah. at a totally different trade show that iViewit doesn't go to. That's just how like small the world, the actually, world and the industry really is. So yeah. I actually had a crazy coincidence story. I, me and my dad had this conversation actually the other day. I'm like, I never call them coincidences. It's divine timing because yeah. it is just too crazy to be a coincidence sometimes. So Gabby and I, we just went to Chicago, Connects FM had like this networking yeah. mixer and I wanted to go to a coffee shop that I had found online. So I search it, I look it up. Well, I accidentally clicked the wrong location. I, and, and once we got there, I was like, this isn't where I wanted to go. Cause it was in the back by all these business buildings, like really just off and not where I needed to be. Yeah. So we go into it anyways, it's a great coffee shop. But as soon as I walk in, I see an old friend from the industry who I met him at like the connects um, trade shows in the past, but he wasn't even going to that event. That's and he just so happened to be at this random coffee shop in Chicago at a place I didn't mean to go to. Um, yeah. And it just, it was so cool to see him and yeah. just catch up, but I've made so many close friends, like some of my favorite people in the whole world at trade shows. And they can be intimidating, but I think a way to really integrate if you are somebody that maybe you are shy, maybe it is hard. Like I have learned that I'm a person that I am outgoing and I do love shows, but for some people that's really, really yeah. hard to just talk to people, talk to strangers, go up to a booth and just approach people. Um, and I would say like the way to get over that is joining like these online digital groups because yeah. A lot of times like they'll have webinars and you can have live chats in there to just mm -hmm. get familiar with some people is so beneficial and might help you like get over that stump of feeling uncomfortable when we're out and about with so many people. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think groups is groups is the way to go. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally agree with you. I, like I mentioned, going to sweets and snacks for the first time this year, I was just like all in on finding out how we could connect ourselves more, right? It's like so hard yeah. to go to a show for the first time and be like, well, I don't really know anybody here and we don't know how the show's gonna go and just like a lot of unknowns. Yeah. Um, but they had like a, a women's leadership breakfast that they did just an amazing job organizing. It yeah. was like super organized and- you Yummy. 
delicious. You were able to talk to a ton of people. Um, I always want to have the good food. I know. Don't be the trade show with the bad food. <laughs> just true. Saying. It's so true. Um, so it was like just finding ways to do stuff like that. Like the events that are also attached to the trade show, but then going to different events, whether that's one that you're hosting or, or people yes. that you know that. Yeah. And like the charity that. events are amazing mm -hmm. to be a part of. Um, yeah, I, I think it's amazing what, like the, the power of community and getting so many people yeah. together and like the impact you can make doing charity events or just in business and life in general, like it's it's amazing. Um, I wanna talk about, we skipped a very important part and it's shipping. It's getting, it's getting your booth there. It's what do you do with your booth? Where do you store it? What options do you it's have for booths? Do you do turnkey situation? <laughs> yeah, you're like, we not talk about it. Um, I'm gonna let you take the reins on yeah. kicking this conversation off. Uh, so obviously you have to get your booth to the location, and you know occasionally, <laughs> or not. yeah, or not. I mean sometimes that happens too. <laughs> occasionally we'll go to a show that's close by and we actually can drive, and that's a little bit more convenient in ways. But if you're shipping it, you know you have to set up with their. Typically, I recommend doing their prefer preferred provider. I can't Agreed. say that. Agreed, yeah. Just because then there's somebody on site that you can ask questions to for if something does go wrong or if you need help, like repackaging it at the end of the show. So we always try to go through... Through the, personal experience, yeah. yeah. We do, like, we don't... The little purple company yeah isn't always our friend no <laughs> don't recommend um even though sometimes that will be the company they recommend i'm like can it be anybody else <laughs> please <laughs> um but yeah so just you have to call or like get a quote from the like logistics provider and then they'll set up a like a ship pick up for you, they'll pick it up, um, and then they typically will take it to an advanced warehouse um, just to get it like nearby the show prior to the actual start of the show because usually you can't have your booth arrive more than like a day or two before the show start. You and so, can, I think they'll just like charge you. They charge you the typically, yeah. you never have, um, yeah. Well, some of them will say like, we won't accept shipment mm. prior. And so that's when like the advanced warehouse is just the better bet. So True. Um, we'll get it there and then they'll, take care of all the logistics, getting it from the warehouse to the actual show site. But um, you have to call, get a quote, you get that pickup date. Um, you have to know like the size and dimensions of your, your freight and um, the weight of your freight. And then it yeah. needs to be packaged. It's definitely nicely. those kind of things that you want to do in advance. Oh, and, yeah. and just to know that, that it's going to come with all of it. Um, and even just the storage of your booth, oh, yeah. what you're doing with that. Uh, do you know like all of our dimensions at this point? When you so, do the palette, because it's got, it has to be some, the same at this point. It's similar and different. A lot of times they will actually just use standard dimensions mm -hmm. as long as you're using like a standard palette. If, oh, that, I mean, I guess it makes sense with a palette. Yeah. A palette size. Um, the only thing is like the weight. Sometimes our weight will change depending on if we're bringing like an extra TV or if we're not yeah. or, you know, different things like that. But usually what they'll do is it's like, okay, what's your best guess? And if it's over the threshold, then they just, they reweigh it anyway. Yeah. So then they can verify what the actual weight is. But, That's cool. um, we had a little bit of a moment this past time our booth came back from a show that had been in Vegas last month oh, yeah. and it arrived and, you know, I mean, there's like pretty standard, I feel like shipping materials that, a lot, of, yeah, yeah. that a lot of people use, you yeah. know, it's like, it's like the same black cases. The, yeah. These black <laughs> cases, they just are big enough. They're sturdy enough that they hold your booth well. So yeah. The booth comes back and I'm taking a look at it and I'm like, yeah, this is our stuff. Like it's these oh, black cases, everything's here. Everything's dandy and peachy. <laughs> and then I was like, wait a second. I was like, there was one thing that we brought that I was like, it's not on this palette. That yeah. was like, just like a total like red flag for me that I was like, hmm. I looked on the label and it wasn't our stuff. Like it was supposed to go to a completely Louisiana. different company, which completely. is the second time that this has happened yeah. by the way. And our delivery driver, he was like, oh yeah, I've only ever heard of this happening one other time, like for the company. <laughs> and I was like, it was probably <laughs> other stuff. <laughs> because like, what are we why? On? Why is it like, is it the name I view it? I don't like, know. I don't know. <laughs> but essentially what they said happened was the booths were packed and taken to the same like facility where then they were going to get picked up from from drivers yeah and the labels at the facility after leaving the trade show got swapped 
And so they sent the one, even though the shipping label of this said to go to Louisiana, it had the like delivery, um, like freight service label to come to Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. And that's what the drivers go off of. Yeah. And it uh, was just like what a, doozy. <laughs> a total headache because they were like, well, we're going to take the stuff because it's not yours. And I'm like, yeah, we don't really want to store some random stuff, get it back to the people that it actually belongs to. Yeah. But then it's communicated and being like, hey, where's our stuff? When is it coming? And it was like, didn't you even reach out to that other company and be like, I did at one point because yeah, you I weren't hearing heard, back from them. I hadn't heard anything Say, yet. Hey, do you I have know. A I was like, do you have a booth? I actually never heard back, but um, anyway, we ended up getting our stuff back and it was totally fine. Not but it's totally, like, we have our booth. But it's just like crazy variables like that that can happen with just, you know, relying on your and, stuff being... And that's this. coming home, like, yeah. let alone, yeah, you don't get it at the show, which that has happened to me in the past. Yeah. We don't need to talk about it, but it has happened. It's <laughs> the most frustrating thing. Yeah. And when it did happen to us um, at that show, there was like four or five other vendors who it happened to them too. It's crazy. And it was, I think it was like a matter of it being right after COVID. So mm -hmm. that especially didn't help. But I mean, this is sending it. We always send it like at least two or three weeks in advance like right. when that opening happens. So it is very frustrating if it happens to you please know like it is not the end of the world like you are not your booth yeah i'm not kidding we would have people say which i think they were kidding but they're like honestly like i know you guys don't have a booth but i don't even notice like i just came up to talk to you guys and yeah you know that's the last thing i'm like wow like they have a standout booth now don't get me wrong we have a standout we new do. booth absolutely and we got many 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 <laughs> compliments <laughs> um and that is nice it is nice to have a well look and design but that's not what matters most and um, you're there to be with people and, and be with your team and grow and learn as much as you can. So, um, and speaking of learning, that's another thing too. Attend like these speaking sessions. Oh, yeah. your, that's, your clients are going there. The attendees are there to hear this. And it's like, that's the information. That's what they care about. That's what's going on right now. So like integrate, educate yourself. Like you never, there's always opportunity to learn in this industry. It's constantly changing in any, any industry. It's like now you've gone to this show and you've probably talked with hundreds of people and you're trying to remember who's who. You've taken business cards, which that's something Gabby is like. Business cards. She, well, she just like, she knows everybody. Yeah, like she, she does. We were. She has a little bit of a photogenic memory I too. Know. I do not remember people. Right. <laughs> well, she was at. We were at Nax, and we had been to a retail show a few months prior, and she was like, "Oh yeah, that's so and so that we met on so and so date," and then we like just totally yeah. remembered it, and I was like, "You are incredible," because I certainly like I need to look at a business card and then look at the face. Go to LinkedIn. Now yeah. I've like matched. I've put up all of the. I put the dots together. Yeah. So. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, take so many notes when you're at trade mm -hmm. shows. Don't think that, like, oh, that was such a great conversation. I'll remember that. No, you won't. You, won't. you need to remember what you talked about that had nothing to do with business because that's going to be your follow up. Like, oh my gosh, I wanted to send you this because we were talking about basketball. Look at this article going on. Like, be a human being with human beings. Like, yeah. that's what people want. They don't care the benefits. They don't care about your features. They care about what problems you are going to solve for them. And if you're a good person and if they like you and you are good to talk to. And, you know, I will say, like, that's one thing I've really valued and learned a lot. And I appreciate about I view it. It's like we are such just good people and good people to be around. And it's like it's very evident in the industry just yeah. because, you know, how people view us, how many friendships we make in the industry, how we hear from clients or other people. I can't tell you how many times I've been in a trade show and I don't even have to pitch myself because somebody knows I view it and they just hype us up. And yeah. like, that goes to say about it's a good product, it's a good service, but it's the people behind the company that it's going to make people willing to talk about and brag about and, and, and go introduce you to somebody they know. So. Right. Um, yeah, I think there's just so much power in being a good human being at these trade shows yeah. and remembering to just be a person and talk to people like that and get to know them, you know, on a deeper level than just surface. Yeah, that's always something that I've appreciated is just like having more real life conversations at these shows and yeah. less like obviously like you're there to sell. Yeah. But it's like you'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to like always lead with like a super salesy pitch. You can have a conversation first and know that person. And I think that's just something that makes then pitching and talking about your product and services 
like more impactful. Yeah, I mean, because when you get let somebody know you, they let their guard down. Yeah. They'll tell you about their problems they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I mean, that's just a simple rule of sales. Like, yeah. just let somebody tell you. Don't come in and just speak their, just like, um, talk their head off. That's yeah. I was going to say speak their head off. It's not crazy. Head off. <laughs> Um, and then follow up too. I mean, just not letting anything go through the cracks, like follow up, follow up, follow up on the plane home, like get your task in order, make your notes. Um, and then again, like we just have a tracker. So we make sure nothing is going miss, you know, what that ROI is from these shows. I know like right now we're in our planning for 2025 or at the end of it of just, you know, what shows were great. How many years have we been going to these shows? Um, awards for show that's another big yeah. thing like make sure you're always applying to awards for these trade set shows just brand recognition um, it's just honorable to receive these awards um, yeah yeah I <laughs> think, like yeah <laughs> I think we really just about hit the nail on the head I mean it's like it's it's about preparation it's about being organized yeah. um, and I think that's something that obviously we're still learning and growing and there will be more improvements we can make down the road, but I do think we have a really good process down. Yeah. Um, and something that we just can work off of and continue to build and, okay. and make better. Yeah, agreed. You're right. I mean, organization is probably the number one, if we're going to summarize all this stuff, like organized to the point that you are missing the hotel. You're staying at the right. main hotel. There's so many people that they have to stay at a hotel two miles down the road because they didn't book their hotels during the opening. So staying on top of it it's a huge investment so you want to make sure that you're getting the most out of it um yeah and and have fun be safe if you want to get a sprinter to drive to these trade shows by all means we've done, we've done that yeah. we've done that <laughs> <laughs> all right well yeah I yeah think that's about it until next time guys yeah bye bye